it is pretty selfish um, and it's probably goes too extreme so I think it's finding that balance for what I thought was kind of very basic knowledge a lot of people didn't, didn't know about and they didn't have to apply these habits so for me yeah just getting that real satisfaction with genuinely seeing the results genuinely helping people you rarely fully switch off and sometimes I reminisce and think oh it's it's quite it would would be quite nice to just fully switch off when you come home but all in together it's 100 million times better focus on your own journey and as long as you have a plan in place tailored to your goals it's tailored to your starting point then you're going to see success yeah so i'm a coach owner of shred athletics coaching uh i started running uh formally posting on social media in 2020 focusing on gym content body transformation nutrition and then transitioned to running uh around 18 months ago and that's um since where i've really found my passion i feel I ran my first marathon in London this year and got a sub three in 253, which I was really, really proud of. Um, and so now that's the focus of my own training, the focus for, for my clients as well. And it's really having that lifestyle of being physically strong, being fit, and then uh, just, just helping in all areas of your life mentally as well. And I think that all just comes together really, really nice. In terms of that transition from kind of transitioning in terms of the coaching side of things for you from from more of the gym side of stuff to now the running side of stuff, what have been like the similarities that you find in in helping people and and, and, and in your own journey as well? Yeah, so it's predominantly the same in terms of building up and stacking up those habits. You know, you have a set plan and what you need to do each week and you take that off. Uh, I'd say that was a pretty easy transition. The hardest part is the actual workouts itself. I truly believe you don't get a harder sport than running, uh, especially when you really want to push your body to the limits. But that's where the gains come from. And that's where it really translates into your life positively, um, both mentally and physically because of because of how difficult it is. And that's why I, I've certainly loved my own journey. And that's what I then teach to my clients as well. But the biggest transition was um, previously I worked in finance. So I moved over to London in 2020. Uh, I'm originally from Jersey, moved over, um, worked in wealth management, but um, realized that I wasn't so passionate about it. So then qualified as a personal trainer and then continued to post on social media. And then it wasn't until a year into that job that I took the leap and then went full time with everything. Um, But yeah, I wouldn't say the transition between training in the gym versus running is too different uh it's it's more just got my fire back myself like i, I really yeah. really love this style of training I don't, I don't think it will change anytime soon that's a that's a big move isn't it like coming over to london and then you know being in the corporate job and then deciding this isn't something i really am passionate about or want to do that must have been quite a difficult decision to make and what was the what was kind of the thought process behind doing it? Was it purely like, I'm just not passionate about this. I want to do something that I love. Yeah. I mean, I've always been into fitness. Like I've always loved sports growing up. I've always loved to be physically fit. I've, it's always something that I prioritized throughout my entire life, whether it be at school, university. Then when I was working in the corporate world, I would always make time for the gym. I'd always make time for my own health journey. I never thought it would then be a career. I thought I would quite like to separate the two and just have my working life and then my personal hobbies that I like to commit myself to outside of work. But then I started helping a few friends for free. I I started helping family members and they sort of saw my body transformation initially where I documented a fat loss phase through social media and people were naturally asking questions. And then that's when I found real value in helping people what I thought was kind of very basic knowledge a lot of people didn't didn't know about and they didn't have to apply these habits so for me yeah just getting that real satisfaction with genuinely seeing the results genuinely helping people and then starting to plot and think how I can make it into a career what you said there was really interesting about the fact you know you were thinking about you've always been into your sort of health and fitness you would do it alongside your corporate job um, but you never really thought it necessarily would be a career. Does that 
is it strange now that you know because at that point that was just yours right when you were in your corporate job fitness was your thing like you had that for yourself now it's not just yours it's kind of everybody else's as well because that's what you do do you ever look back at that time and think oh that was actually quite nice that that was just mine at that point or are you always are you are you really happy about this kind of world that you're living in now and that you've created yeah i definitely yeah now that i sort of live it live and breathe it like it is my life um documenting my fitness journey is my is part of my job posting on socials is part of my job and sometimes when i'm maybe underslept not feeling so creative my personal fitness journey is not going so well i just want to go for a few pints with my mates in the pub i just want to have a good time and then suddenly i realized oh i haven't posted on social media for a week i need to make sure my my clients are okay uh it's you 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 rarely fully switch off i know everyone says that and it's a bit, a bit cliche but you do you rarely fully switch off and sometimes i reminisce and think oh it's it's quite it would would be quite nice to just fully switch off when you come home but all in together it's hundred million times better uh in terms of the overall lifestyle um prioritizing what i want to do each day but yeah it's it's come with its own challenges and difficulties and i've had to develop as a person as a result of it um because you you truly can't can't slack off like even uh if i'm away on holiday i'm I'm still thinking oh i should should be doing this or that or you know, you can always be posting. You can you can post unlimited videos on social media. So, yeah, there's always these thoughts that come when I come through, and, and I'm thinking, oh, I should be, you know, grinding out a YouTube video every week. I should be posting more frequently. All of this, connecting with people. But yeah, you you can only do so, so much in your day. So I just like to keep it fairly simple, keep my day structured, and as long as I get a few things done that I I need to take off and prioritize and that i'm enjoying the process then the overall lifestyle for me is a million times but i don't don't regret it at all are there um are there things that you love in terms of like the jobs that you know you're doing on a day-to-day basis because yeah it is a it is a real grind kind of living the life that you're you're living are those those jobs that you actually really enjoy doing and are there jobs that you're like oh god i wish i didn't have to do this Oh yeah, definitely. I think naturally in anything you do, there's anything that you do that has a high reward. There's some element of delayed gratification where in the moment it doesn't, doesn't feel so good. You don't necessarily want to, want to do the tasks at hand, but that's the same with training. Like there's, there's plenty of workouts where I just really can't afford it. As <laughs> I'm sure you're aware as well, yeah. where you see the program and you've got 30 kilometers to run and you're like, I really can't, can't be bothered for this, but then the the overall mission transpires and you you connect the dots into why you're doing it. You think into the future and you understand that it's got it's got to get done. So yeah, there's always there's always little things. But I mean, I'm pretty sure if even if no one had to work at all or do any jobs, you still get irritated by small tasks just day to day. I mean, yeah, it, you can't really avoid that. I've been I've been having a few conversations recently about kind of the how running kind of mirrors or I guess even just training mirrors everyday life right like and and you've kind of just said it there again there are so many things in everyday life that you're like oh god I don't want to do this or I don't want to do that you know we've all got that one household job that we hate I hate the food shopping can't deal with it stresses me out don't like it and it but I have to do it because I have to eat (laughs) and it's the same with like certain sessions like I'm not a massive fan of like minute on, minute off or 90 seconds on, 90 seconds off. I don't like it. It hurts. I can't judge it right most of the time. But I know it's one of the sessions that will get me really fit. And so you just have to do it. And I think in running and in life, there are those things, aren't there, that you just, you have to do in order to progress, if that makes sense. Yeah, and I think that's where it ties into that's why I've always loved fitness so much because it does tie into everyday and, and real life because it teaches you to do things that you don't necessarily want to do. Uh, it teaches consistency and discipline and all these things that do help in the grand scheme of things. So that's why I've always, it's always had a consistent theme throughout my whole life. And I've always prioritized my own fitness journey and I will never not 
So whatever it is, I mean, it probably won't be running forever. I'll probably transition into something else, but I know it will be health related. It will be fitness related because that's what I love. And as a result, it's taught me so much about how I live my life as well. And that's got to be, you know, gratifying for you, but not just gratifying personally, gratifying for, you know, the clients that, that you've got uh, under your banner um, for them but also you seeing their journeys and thinking, well, I know how that feels, like how you're feeling right now. I know what that is doing to your life and to your kind of personal life in terms of your mental, your physical health. How does that feel for you to see these people on their own journeys? Oh yeah, it's, it's incredible. And it's why I do it as a job. And I think it's why I've probably seen okay success on social media as well, because I'm fairly empathetic and understand that people have different starting points and um, it's how you communicate that message effectively to help people in the best way possible because yeah. what works for some, someone might not work for somebody else. We all have different starting points. I've seen pretty quick progress in my running and I've documented that, but that's also because I've seen that fast progress because I've, I've had a fitness background um, I've trained pretty hard in the past. I think that definitely helps, but people got to understand that you've got to kind of stay in your own lane and, and focus on your own journey. And as long as you have a plan in place and you execute on that and it's tailored to your goals, it's tailored to your starting point, then you're going to see success. So it's just making sure that you have someone that holds you accountable. You're pushing yourself. As you know, you're making it that little bit harder each week. And whether that be... Yeah, like you were saying, doing all those tough sessions, but increasing the paces a little bit or the duration of, of the run of the workout. When you, you force that progression and force that discomfort, then that's where you see the progress because it is so easy to get complacent. And I certainly was um, within my, my journey, which I think is why I was looking for something else. I was looking for something to really challenge me. And then when I got given a, a London marathon place, I thought this is a perfect time to do something completely new that's completely out of my comfort zone. I wasn't, I definitely wasn't very fit at all. And when I started, I kind of disregarded the uh, cardio, disregarded a lot of my cardiovascular fitness. And so prioritizing that and doubling down on that has massively transformed my life. So it's really trying to educate and teach my clients exactly that formula. When you were in that place, you know, you, you just said personally, maybe you're a bit complacent at one point in your fitness journey. Did you realize you were there or did it, did it take kind of coming out of that and then looking back to realize I was being a little bit complacent at that point? Yeah, it's true. It's true. I, I mean, certainly when I worked my corporate job and then I was trying to build something on the side, it was difficult. And then you've got, you know, Thursday work drinks. You've got, I just moved to London. I wanted to go out. I wanted to party. I wanted to see my friends. So there's only so much you can do in a week. Um, so certainly, yeah, probably without realizing it, my personal health took a bit of a dip um I was probably yeah not as in shape I wasn't out of shape I wasn't in uh, incredible shape considering what I was preaching um and so yeah you you feel like a little bit of a hypocrite hypocrite and also you there's signs there when you struggle on what to post on social media there's no real like underlining theme with your fitness journey there's only so many like educational videos you can make. At the end of the day, people want to invest into your story, track your story, and you want to know what that end goal is. And it can, of course, change throughout your journey. But I think having something to work towards, like at the moment, uh, I'm really, really loving the journey towards my next marathon in Valencia, which is on the 1st of December. And already I'm a few weeks in and I feel the best I've ever felt. I've got that focus, that spark back. And again, it probably happened in summer a little bit where I got a little bit complacent, wasn't training as much as I normally do. The reason I mentioned that complacency thing is because it's definitely something I've fallen into in the past as well. Like, it's just one of those things, isn't it, that if you're not checking in with yourself from time to time and kind of like your own personal journey, it's so easy just to fall into a pattern of of not doing it, of not practicing what you preach and as it is with a habit of when you're on a good fitness journey it's very easy to go on the slide as well isn't it so is that something you kind of do just kind of check in with yourself from time to time as you would with a client I guess 
Yeah, it's a good question. I think there's a difference between complacency and then maybe just prioritizing other elements of your life. Like there certainly is more to life than than your fitness journey. It can get quite self-centered. I know it's when I was training for the marathon, like as you know, it becomes your whole personality. Like you can't do anything else. And it, it teaches you a lot of good lessons. Like you, you say no to a lot of things, which can help, but it is, it is pretty, pretty selfish. Um, and it's probably goes too extreme. So I think it's finding that balance that works for you where you're still progressing in your fitness journey. You're still happy with the direction you're going, the product of your habits, but at the same time, your, your relationship is going well. You're spending time with family. You have a social life. You have friends around you because these things are really important. So I think as long as there are, there's a reason for maybe slight reduced training volume, for instance, in the summer, straight off the back of the marathon, I'm not going to be training as intensely as yeah. uh, like a month out for a marathon. And I, I'm maybe seeing, yeah, have more of a social life. And I think that's okay. But as long as you're planning to get back on track and uh, you have that next goal lined up, then I don't see an issue with that. It's just when it lasts it's on end and then it's starting to impact other areas it's, it's yeah I mean at the end of the day when I'm, I'm not an elite athlete um I don't need to tick off certain times I don't need to train every day if I don't want to so as long as it's complementing my life and I'm prioritizing my health I'm feeling good and at the same time I I enjoy my life and I, I prioritize my social life too then that's that's the goal and I think it's it's finding that balance and that balance is absolutely different for, for everyone I think you could probably relate this to 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 whatever sport you're training in, but uh, my coach always says to me, "Happy runners run fast," and I think that's I always I always quite like that in terms of a just a you know a, a phrase that you can you could write down on the back of a napkin or whatever, just that short little phrase, "Happy runners run fast," and you can apply things like that to everyday life. Like, is this is this something that is going to make me happy or gratify me or add something to my life, or is it is it not? And if it if it does, then there's no reason, like you say, you shouldn't do it because that potentially will make you happy down the line. Happy runners run fast, etc. Yeah, I, I mean, I noticed that as well in terms of it's probably ties to being happy, but certainly when you're more relaxed, you run a lot faster as well. I think yeah. the races where I put a lot of pressure on myself and I'm, I have to run fast straight out of the blocks. I'm very tense. I'm 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 not like relaxed and, and I'm not even enjoying it. I'm just like, get this over with. That's when I typically run slower or my heart rate's elevated. I don't enjoy it. So um, yeah, I think that's that's a good mantra for sure and something that I need to apply. And then when I've ran my best, I've just, I just love that feeling of, of running. I, I just really get into my stride. You're thinking about nothing else. Your body's relaxed. Your shoulders aren't tense and certainly you sort of glide across. So yeah, I think... Um, I definitely need to apply that to this trading block in Valencia because if you're not enjoying it, then what's the point? Valencia, looking forward to that. Then you've you kind of just mentioned pressure. Are there things that you've you put into play to sort of to sort of harness that that feeling of pressure? Like, w- will there be certain things you do through this training block? Are there going to be things you implement when you're you know out in Valencia on the start line that help kind of deal with that pressure? Yeah, I mean. I definitely think social media helps with pressure yeah. because your audience holds you accountable. My clients hold me accountable and I put it out there because if, for instance, I was still just working a corporate job, I probably would slack a little bit more because you have less accountability. Whereas when you're saying I'm going to do a certain time or I'm going to beat my previous time, then it's out to the world and you, you said it. So that definitely helps with the motivation. Um, and I think it can help you push hard, but at the same time, you don't want to put too much pressure on yourself. Um, at the end of the day, completing a marathon is a, is a massive achievement for those that have done it. And so, yeah, you want to, and tie back to that, you want to enjoy the journey first and foremost. And then if running fast and setting these big goals is going to provide that satisfaction, is going to provide that enjoyment, then amazing. But that's not for everyone. For, for some people, they just literally want to, go into the ultra scene and run further and further distances or they just want to complete their first marathon then they'd never want to do one again 
So it's finding what what um, goal you want to be held accountable to, and then make sure that you take the actionable steps to make sure that you absolutely get there. Does that pressure ever feel too much for you, though? Like we've mentioned social a few times, you've got a big old audience there now, like nearly over two hundred thousand people now on Instagram alone. What does that ever feel like? A, like this is quite a lot. Of this, like this, I've I've put this goal out there. It's a lofty goal. I want to run sub two fifty in Valencia. I believe that's your goal, isn't it? Like, is that does that feel like? Oof, I've got to hit this now, otherwise I'm going to be letting a lot of people down. Type thing. No, nah, I don't, I don't think so because. I've also said I'm going to achieve certain times and not done it in the past okay. and I'll still share my, my journey. It's still a good story and there's still good lessons to learn from at the end of the day. And you can put a lot of pressure on yourself, but at the end of the day, most people really don't care. Like they'll watch your video and then they get on with, with their lives. They really, they're not bothered. So yeah, I think often it's in your own head and I quite like, having that pressure but at the end of the day if I fall short then I just try again so um yeah I, I, I have noticed that it is getting harder and harder for sure when I first started you see this immense progress as I'm sure you experienced when you first got into running and then that becomes addictive and then you want more and more and more but of course it's, there's diminishing returns so it will come to a point where it the margins are going to get tighter but if I still find enjoyment and satisfaction, and if I want to still push myself to, to get quicker, then I'll keep going. Whereas if I want to pivot and go a different route, then I'll do that. But yeah, I don't think um, there's as much pressure as people think, even if you do have a big audience, even if you do put it out on social media, at the end of the day, people have their own lives. They don't, they don't care too much. That's quite a you know high level of maturity though, mate, to be, be, be thinking like that, because I know there are people that are listening to this that, you know, we'll have a we'll have a goal, and it will feel like the absolute end of the world if they don't hit it. Where, where's where's that kind of maturity in in that sort of feeling come from? I mean, I, I, it's a good question. To be honest, uh, I think just over the years of posting, I've I've been on social media for a long time now. I know that they do, it doesn't really matter. I, I mean, people have have very big egos within social media and they think that everyone's thinking about them but they're, they're really not um and at the end of the day i'm i'm all about educating and telling good stories so uh there's always lessons to be learned and i am fairly new to the sport anyway so i'm keen to yeah say if it does go awfully wrong and i mess up my nutrition for example there's a key core lesson there that i can then educate to thousands and tens of thousands of people so they don't make that mistake. Um, so I think whatever happens, there's there's certainly always lessons and it's just making sure that you're honest and you document what happens. Um, I also think it makes you more relatable if you do have hiccups, if you're not enjoying some workouts and you're being honest and open, it makes you more human. It makes people relate to you further. So I don't think it's like you're fully tied to like some kind of robot where you have to smash these certain milestones. If you don't, then you just fall off and no one cares. It's it's making sure that, yes, if it does go wrong, if you fall short of your goal, um, you at least explain what happened and hopefully you can that will give you an extra boost to the next one. I've certainly had it myself where if a race hasn't gone well, I'm then super mo motivated with my training. So I always am someone that just likes to race as, as frequently as possible. Yeah put myself out there even if I know I'm not in good shape I'll still do it whereas I know a lot of people will hold on to their previous times maybe or their previous fitness levels and they'll be a bit bit scared or anxious to to enter another race if they're not feeling their best um but at the end of the day it's introspective it's just their own head playing themselves like no one no one really really cares when you're going into a race and you know maybe look I'm not in I'm not in pb shape I'm not in the best place that I I thought I was going to be. I think there's two schools of thought here. Do you go in to enjoy the race or do you go in and just go as hard as you can and race every oh, race you, you race? I always, I always go as hard as I can. <laughs> I knew you were going to say that. Even if I'm not shape, even if I'm not <laughs> shape, I will, try, I, will try, I will think that I am and I'll try and convince myself I am and I'll push as hard as humanly possible. And it'll probably go wrong. But um, <laughs> yeah, I'm never one to just be like, oh, I don't know, I'm just going to... You know, take it easy and then really you know they're, they're trying to pb i'll just just go for it and see see what happens and then i think the more the more failures and setbacks you have 
then you, you definitely grow and progress much faster over the bigger picture. We're a couple of weeks deep into into your training block for for Valencia, like you say, December. Was it the second Valencia? Is that am I right in saying that? It's December the first. Um, how, how are you feeling? A couple of weeks deep. I know we're we're, we're speaking on the twenty fifth of September. Um, yeah, where, where's where's the head at? Where are the legs at? Yeah, it's good. I mean, I did my first like super long run last weekend, and I f- I actually forgot how tough it gets like how your legs just don't move. Uh, I did a 30K around Richmond Park. And for me, that was some decent elevation. I'm used to Batsy Park where it's super flat. And I found it really, really tough. I didn't even go quickly either. But um, yeah, it was definitely a humbling experience. But that's what I quite like because you realize that you're currently very far off where you, you want to be, where you need to be. And again, it's just having those setbacks to then fuel your motivation for your training which I think is really, really important. So I'm definitely going to do a few races along the way as well. Um, I'm potentially looking at a 10K race next week, but we'll see. Um, just to see to see where we're at. And I think it's one of the best things when it doesn't go well, especially when your number one goal is the marathon. And then hopefully you have the mistakes along the way to learn from. If you if you would flash back now to, to Corporate Freddy, you know, like a few years back, in that job, in that suit every day, I'm sure, going into work, working in finance. And then you you showed him a picture of where you are today and said, I'm off to run Valencia Marathon, trying to run sub 250 in December. What do you think he would say to to this version of you sitting in front of me now? Yeah, I mean, it actually makes me smile. Like it would, I'd be blown away where I am at the moment, just in terms of my, even my business, my my socials, even how I set up my life, like I, yeah, I, I definitely envisioned this life for a long time. And you sometimes forget when you're in it. Um, you forget to be grateful for where you currently are at. And certainly I wouldn't think it was possible because so when I started posting on social media, it was very much like TikTok short form. It still kind of is, but the quality of my videos were very, very different. Um, and I'd never thought that that would then potentially progress into to where I am now um so yeah I'm, I'm I'm incredibly proud of these last last couple of years when I look back um I just yeah I just never kind of really expected it at all um but I think that's what's exciting and what I love about this job and what I love about social media is that you truly don't know what's going to happen and that high risk means that there is potential for big downsides but there's also potential for a lot of upside so yeah I like I like being on the edge I like where I'm currently at and that's why I don't really think too far into the future either and that's what I didn't like about the corporate world is that there is just a defined ladder that you must progress through if you want to stay in the, the current company and um there's that there's no room for sort of excitement or, or random um yeah r- random sabbaticals or things that come up um within your career it's very much like fixed um and that defined progression ladder almost scared me i suppose so i think if i did stay within that role i would have probably moved around um or gone traveling for a bit or done something because I, I certainly operate best when there is a lot of risk yeah you strike me as the sort of person that would like to say you know yes to opportunities and i mean before this conversation we we just said you had a last minute opportunity to to go to Berlin for the marathon this weekend. Why, 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 where's that come from? Where's the saying yes side of your personality come from? Because, you know, not everybody has that. And sometimes taking risks is, is scary, but you, you seem like somebody that isn't scared about things like that, really. Yeah. I mean, I suppose it's just, it's just, I have a fairly impulsive nature. Um, I like to yeah take risks. I don't know whether it's biological or whether yeah, it's genetic or whether I've always had it. Um, I definitely feel like it's changed over the years and I have a higher risk appetite as I've got older just okay. because you kind of realize that it is limited, um, these opportunities. So you, you want to kind of grab them and just go for it. And also you kind of, pitch in your head the worst case scenario and it's it's never never so bad you can always figure it out um 
so yeah, I suppose that's probably what's led me down to the current career path I'm on. It's just that excitement, wanting to take risk and just, just do random things and see what happens. Um, and yeah, I, in terms of where it's come from, it's a good question. I, I don't know, I suppose. Yeah, it's, it's definitely, um, definitely something I need to think about. I don't know. Yeah, it's interesting because I know there will be people listening to this that are kind of stuck in a, a job or I don't know, in a in a personal situation that they don't want to be in. Um and, and sometimes it's really hard, isn't it, to take a step back and think, oh, I don't I don't want to do this anymore. You can't see from the wood from the trees, as the famous saying goes, but there is always something on the other side of that thing. It's just sometimes about taking that initial step, like it is with running a lot of the time as well, like getting out the door, going on the session. Like that initial step is sometimes the hardest, isn't it? Yeah, definitely. And I think once you do take that step, whatever it is, you then figure it out. So whether that be, yeah, leaving a job that you don't like, whether that be leaving a relationship, um, whether that be just stepping out the door and going for a 10 minute, 15 minute run, it's taking that initial step and you always then figure out afterwards, even if it's the wrong decision, it's at least it's a decision. I think certainly the periods of my life that's been the most difficult is when I've not made a decision on anything and then just just thought about it when you think about it and don't take action i think that lands you in a worse position because then you're two years down the line three years down the line in the same position talking about the same dilemma rather than if you're just taking that step whatever that step may be at least then you're in you're you're solving different problems and they could be far worse problems you could have made a completely terrible call like with with leaving my corporate job at the time it was probably um yeah l- looking back i probably maybe wouldn't have done it if i know what i know now uh and given where i was in my own journey at that given time but you almost benefit from that naivety and i certainly feel like i have even with the running side of things i'm almost grateful that i didn't do a lot of running when i was when i was younger because um whatever i'm learning i'll talk about and i'm almost yeah, very carefree in that sense. Whereas I feel like people who have a strong background in running, whether they be like ex elite or training for the elite, they they really want to protect themselves and they want to kind of shut themselves off, don't uh, express it or talk about their training methods, talk about what they're doing each day. So I think yeah, there's benefit into being a bit naive and and even being wrong. Like it doesn't matter, right? So uh, that's definitely helped all aspects of my journey and whatever I try and pursue. I think accepting failure as part of it is is something that's really, really beneficial and something that I think everyone should should welcome in. It's really interesting that point about running coming in and just discovering all this stuff later on. It's it's almost like what's that film? Narnia, is it, where they open the open the cupboard and you walk in and you're like, Oh my god, there's all this stuff. Like, does it feel like that sometimes? Is it a bit like, oh my well, I guess it's probably not now because you're a bit further down the line but when you first started you open the cupboard and you've got on that shelf there's tempo on that shelf there's intervals on that shelf there's zone two training on that shelf is there's so much isn't there to get your head around when you first enter yeah luckily for me i didn't i didn't necessarily have that um and i just was like oh i had some like really dodgy terrible worn down trail shoes and i just (laughs) went out went out because my girlfriend's a really keen runner. She, like she's ran her whole life and she was the one that actually got my London Marathon place. So she kind of got me into running. I went out for a run with her and it wasn't even quick. And I was literally blowing. Like it, we were, we maybe went for like four or five K and my heart rate was through the roof, like sweating. Um, I was a total novice. Like I had those, um, those calf compressions, uh, Go on. Some, like terrible dodge, uh, trail <laughs> shoes. So I didn't care, which was also, it was to my benefit. I didn't like, I'm almost happy that I didn't delve too deep. So instantly I was like sharing already like back then what I was doing. And I was like, oh, super proud guys. I got a 5k in 25 minutes, or whatever it was. And whereas I think, yeah, a lot of people would be like, oh, I can't share my stuff until I get good. So that definitely helps a lot because you can literally see exactly what I've done throughout my journey and where I, where I came from. And people who have been and following me for the past couple of years have seen that all the way through because I've been very vocal and honest 
with exactly where I'm at. And like we were saying before, even now, if a race goes really badly, I'll still I'll still just post about it and just say say what happened. So I think um, yeah, being slightly naive to how complex it can be definitely helps because you just focus on what you're currently doing and you learn step by step along the way. And I think this is it's probably a nice place to finish because jumping back to the analogy of running being like life, like it really is the first thing that you need to do or the only first thing you need to do is put your shoes on, right? And it, it, you, you can genuinely forget about everything else, all the complexity of running. If you just put your shoes on, get out the door, go for a run, that really is kind of the first step you need to make, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. And I think, yeah, it's been a good common theme throughout this whole chat is taking that step and seeing what happens and changing my whole narrative and direction of my life is been, has come about from exactly that. So just taking that first step and whatever that is, even if it was something small like moving to London for the first time with, with my corporate job, um, coming from a very small town and island, I could have just stayed comfortable, stayed there in what I know. But small things like that, changing location, um, going away, going traveling, uh, just doing something that's, that's different, that feels uncomfortable, forcing your way through that, and then you come out the other end a completely different person.